So, the Ravens, they did it. And I know a lot of y'all, like, I seen the comment section. Oh, and I remember when we did the live stream, uh, a little bit after the 53-man roster was finalized, it was a lot of people just, like, scared and worried. Like, why would we cut Cold Cap? Why would we cut McPhee? Why would we cut those guys? We really kept Ferg over McPhee, and they were going crazy. And we tried to explain, like, look, Ravens, Ravens got to be one of the most loophole teams in the league. You know, Patriots, they've they been up there, but Ravens is close, man. When it comes to finding loopholes in the system and maneuvering this and that, and like being a Ravens fan, you will really learn about a lot of the ins and outs of football, a lot of the business stuff that you, maybe on some other teams, you might have never found out about. But because they... They really just, they try the system. They, they, they try to play the system as much as they can, and they do a pretty good job of it. Even remember, I think it was last year, remember when they were, they were going to, they came to the agreement with the Jaguars, but the Jaguars, the, was it the Jaguars or the Saints? Maybe it was the Saints. I forgot who, mm, Ah, I forgot who it was. But they came to agreement with, uh, maybe it was the Saints. But where the Saints, they were going to sign uh, Jadavian Clowney. And they, the Ravens were going to ag agree to trade either some draft picks or some players to the Saints. And then they would get Jadavian Clowney. Y'all remember that? Because the loophole was that the Ravens, they couldn't pay all of the signing bonus because they didn't have enough money to do that. So the Saints, no, I think it was actually the Jaguars. The Jaguars were going to absorb the blow of the signing bonus, but they were going to get some players and draft picks from the Ravens, and Ravens were going to get Jadavian Clowney. Remember that? I, I sure remember. I don't remember if it was the Saints or Jaguars. I'm thinking it was the Jaguars, but either way, the Ravens, they do this stuff where they really try to play the system. So I love it. I'm with it. It's all good. But I, I know a lot more of Ravens fans were super scared Especially <laughs> especially after yesterday with Michigan Mason. Because Michigan Mason, oh boy. <laughs> I'll let him announce his own plans. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying a word about that guy. Don't talk to me about Ben Mason. Shout out to John Harbaugh, man. But shout out to Harbaugh. We love Harbaugh, man. We got like this. It's, it's a tough love for Harbaugh. It's a frustrating love for Harbaugh. But it's love for hardball, man. Um, and, and that's what I feel like uh, you got you to gotta have that, man. You got to have that. Don't always agree with everything that he does. Don't always agree with all the different moves that the Ravens make and whatnot. Um, but there's hardball pretty cool, man. He, he, he's pretty cool. But anyway, um, with Ben Mason, I know that whole situation, that scared a lot of Ravens fans with Pernell McPhee. Because they saw that, they saw this guy Ben Mason, he just got cut, and it's like, whoa, this is a rookie who just got cut, unproven guy, but he went and got picked up by the the Patriots for their practice squad. So that had a lot of Ravens fans like, oh my goodness, I, I, what's going to happen with McPhee? He's, he's not back, what's going on? And... With McPhee, it's like, this is a proven guy. This is a veteran. This guy, he has plenty of what he's done on film already. So teams could see that and they could be like, hmm, you know what? Come through. Come through. Especially because those little handshake deals, they mean nothing. Those handshake deals, those little wink, wink deals, those, oh, hey, you, you, we're going to cut you, but you'll be back in a little bit. You coming through? Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll come through. Y'all just, just hit me up when you're ready. Those don't get deposited into the players' bank accounts. They don't. Because while it's an agreement, it's a verbal agreement, those verbal agreements are not contracts. They're not contracts. So you could talk all this, you want to, blah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But until you sign, then it becomes official. But if you don't sign, it's obviously not official. So that had a lot of people freaking out about Pernell McPhee. Uh, but now all can be put to rest. Everybody can be at ease now because McPhee is officially back with the team. And not only that, he's on the active roster. He's not even on the practice squad. So the Ravens said, we bringing this guy back to the actual team 
not the practice team, but the actual team. So this is good for the Ravens. This is good for Pernell McPhee. Hopefully he can get his second Super Bowl with the team. We'll see how things work themselves out. Um, now, earlier today, the Ravens had a presser. And that presser featured another one of Ravens' pass rushers, a new guy, Dalen Hayes. And Dalen Hayes is somebody who I, I feel like everybody has just fallen in love with. Uh, I absolutely love this guy. Um, just the way he speaks. I know my guy simply said that he gets J.K. Dobbins vibes from uh, from Dalen Hayes. Uh, but this guy, he when he, he talked about training camp, and he said it was the hardest six weeks of his life. The hardest six weeks of his life. Um, but he said it, it's been a grind. He talked about his relationship with Adafi away. Uh, said that they like twins because they obviously both rookies. They came in on the same class together. So they will always forever have that connection, no matter where, which one ends up. If they end up going somewhere else, if they stay here, whatever happens, they will always forever be linked uh, because they were two of the Ravens outside linebackers drafted in the same year. Um, he also, of course, with Justin Houston, Yoda. Um, there's just that, that respect for Justin Houston and this guy, he's only been on the team for a short amount of time. Uh, but you, you hear that impact that he's had on so much of these young guys, man. Um, and the, um, DW, uh, the Ravens outside linebacker coach. Oh, I forget his name, but he talked about, he was like, Hey, that guy got 97 and a half sacks, not me. <laughs> but uh, he, that dude was super cool, man. But Justin Houston, we just this team, man. When you sit back and really think about it, uh, this this team is they they pretty stacked, man. They are pretty stacked. the The one thing that they got going against them is just health of everybody. But even with that, even with the the injuries that they have right now, there are injuries that those guys should be back in a little bit. Obviously, minus J.K. Dobbins and minus L.J. Fort, but most of those injuries, those guys should be back relatively soon. So Ravens got a lot of stuff going in their favor right now. Hopefully it continues that way and they stay healthy. Um, but they, this team is like, they, they with it, man. Now with Dalen Hayes, again, I felt like as a pass rusher, like right here, right now, he's above Adafe away. Uh, he's a little, he's past Adafe away. Um, now Adafe away, he, he's very raw. Um, he definitely got the athleticism. And the intangibles and the measurements. Shout out to y'all that was in the stream the other day when I just could not remember what the words were. Um, but I pre that's why I appreciate Team Keep It Clean so much. But Adafi away, and he's got the build. He's this giant. He's just like a, a freak of nature, man. Um, and so when he gets it, it's going to be very, very scary. But Dalen Hayes is somebody that he's going to make some noise this year, too, for sure. I envision him being active right now on every single game day. I, I really see it right now uh, because the what, what he's shown in just a small sample size in preseason, it has looked really good. And the thing about it, too, that I love the most is that it's been consistent. It's been consistent. And I know some people could, same argument that we talked about before, some people could be like, oh, well, he was going against backups. He was going against backups. He wasn't even going against starters. He wasn't going against starting quarterbacks. He wasn't going against starting offensive lines. But think about this. While that is true, one, if he was doing bad against those backups, then the conversation would be a lot worse. But imagine him going against those starting offensive linemen. So, yeah, the challenge raises itself up. But imagine him also with Calais Campbell next to him, Derek Wolf. Adafe away, Bowser, well Bowser, he'll be probably spelling Bowser, but you get what I'm saying, imagine him not only going against starters, but playing with starters around him, so now you gotta account for those guys too, so yeah, Dalen Hayes, he gonna be something, he gonna do some stuff this year, man, I, I think that is for sure, because he, he just, he got it right now, man. He got it. The only thing that I could see holding Dalen Hayes back would be the lack of opportunity. That could that would be the only thing I see holding him back. Would be the lack of opportunity. That would be it. Other than that, man, from what we've seen so far in preseason, man, we're going to see though, man. But anyway, team keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Happy Thursday. Hope everything is going good with y'all, man. If it's not, keep your head up.
keep going. Keep going. Don't give up. Too many people give up. Too many people give up. Don't give up, man. Because stuff, it could be way worse than what it is right now. Way worse. But you still here. You still got an opportunity to turn that thing all the way around, man. I love y'all, team. Keep it clean. Y'all keep your heads up. We out.